Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys. I'm Christian Ocampo here at the Hatchery in Los Angeles, California. And today I'm joined by Victoria Hardwood. How are you, Victoria? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Good. So, uh, well, it's lovely to meet you and here we are in the sunshine again. <laughs> the never-ending heat. So, oh. oh, go ahead. We have a few questions to ask you. First, what's it like working in the industry today? Actually, there's something about very dramatic about to happen, um, which is that they are working out a deal which may mean that all of the gamers, all of the voice actors that are in games, go on strike. Um, so that's the big news right now. But other than that, I think the industry is, uh, it does well. I, I don't work very much in the industry anymore. I did uh, work mostly for one company and um, they went under a few years ago and um, more or less I used to work mostly for them. That was new generation pictures, although they're up and running again. So funnily enough, I have started doing more things. I just did a game for a phone. Um, and I can't remember what it's called, I'm sorry. Actually, they might have not have told me. You know, everything is so secret these days. You do things and you never know. You get these waivers, so. Yeah. So, what's your favorite show you have worked on? What's a show that I've worked on? <clears throat> Well, Helsing was uh, the long-running show because I started doing that way back, I think, in 2001 and uh, maybe 2000, yeah, 2001, something like that. And we did 13 episodes, so we'd go away, come back, do a few episodes, um, another year would pass, Some there would be a flurry of activity, then... A period would pass, sometimes a long period, and people would be saying, where's the next episode? Um, so eventually we did it, and then they, they called us up and said, we're going to do it all over again. So we did the whole thing over again, I think, all of the original cast. And in fact, I think we just finished that a year ago. And funnily enough, this year I won an award for it which is something that I started doing 15 years ago. So it's, it's, it's kind of bizarre, but we became a very close-knit family, having uh, come together so many times over the last 15 years that uh, I'm good friends with uh, most of the cast, actually, still, and still in touch with them. All right, so that was your show question. So we want to know what was it, that, what was it like working on Helsing and Helsing Ultimate? What was it like working on it? <clears throat> Most of the time I was with Talison. Well, anyone who knows Talison will know that it is a lot of fun working with Talison. He has some very dirty jokes, some filthy songs, um, and uh, he's always full of humor. And when he likes something that you've done, he gets very excited. And uh, it's, it is a joy working with him. It was, a, it was a good experience all around. Particularly, I had a couple of friends in there as well, so we would get together. Uh, J.B. Blanc is a friend of mine, um, Stephen Brand, and then Katie Gray and everyone, they became friends after the show. But I knew Stephen and J.B. before we started on Helsing. So it was, a, it was very, very, uh, very much fun, very much a social thing. That's a good friendship right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, not sure you worked on what was it like working on Techno Dice. Techno Dice was an interesting show because um, she was a very different character, and I was. Um, we, we were talking earlier about Deers as well, which is, is quite a sexual show. And I thought there was quite a, a sexual element to Doc as well, um, in a slightly perverse way. And um, I enjoyed that show. I'm surprised it didn't become more popular. You know, Helsing became very popular. Technolize had its fans, but it didn't take off in quite the same way. 
but uh, I liked it myself. I liked the show. I thought it was a little bit uh, perverse. <laughs> it was pretty slow, but yes. it was slow. Yeah, maybe. All right. So we have another fun question. If you can be any character you have played in real life, who will you be? And you can mix and match. Oh, <clears throat> what I could I could be a real character. Yeah. Any of the characters that I've played, well, definitely there would be um, Integra would be in there, and um, but I think, uh, whoa, why not make a really empowered woman and um, and mix Ruby from Deers with Integra? I don't know, maybe too much, but would be definitely interesting for a spin. <laughs> So since you mentioned deers, what was like working on deers? It's very you. You say you you watched it. Okay, you watched it. I didn't watch the whole thing. I would see what I'm working on, and um, the funny thing is that you, unless you see a piece of work um, that has been written, directed, acted edited and finalized and you are the audience you will get the full meaning when you are just one of the cogs in the wheel you don't feel sexy playing those characters you don't feel anything at all just saying the lines in a small little booth with people outside the booth you've got the things on your ears they're saying stop cut can you try it a bit more like this so really it's just uh, very much another job All right. Another project you worked on was like working on Cypress Summer 1974. Well, <clears throat> that that was a project of my own, and um, briefly in 1974, I was a young girl and I was living in Cyprus. And I woke up one morning and there was gunfire and bombs going off outside my house. And we lived very close to the presidential palace. And what it was, it was a military coup, and they were overthrowing the president at the time. And then that was followed a few days later by a full-on invasion by Turkey. And um, the results of that, still 40 years later, the island is divided in two. So last year was the 40th anniversary of that um, war and invasion, and I thought I should do something with the diary. So I dug it up. And I um, printed it large onto sort of poster size pages and I displayed it in a, a beautiful little gallery on the green line. The green line is the line that separates the north and the south, the Greeks and the Turks to this day. So it goes right through the middle of the capital city. And so I had this little gallery and literally my gallery was here and then at the end of the street there was the Greek checkpoint and then you could, there, there was no man's land and then the Turkish checkpoint and you saw the mosque behind us. So it was a very evocative uh, place to put it. So we had a street party and everyone came and it was such a wonderful event. I decided to make a little movie of it. So I made a short documentary and um, that's up on YouTube. You can watch it. It's called Cyprus summer 1974 movie pretty easy to remember and um, Yeah, it also went to a film festival in New York um, It was shown at Tribeca. So I had a little premiere there uh, It's just been shown at another arts festival this weekend up in uh, New Jersey. It went to Cyprus as well so uh, it's done doing its rounds and um, it's a very personal pet project which uh, I'm very proud of actually yeah my first foray into filmmaking I guess that's good so is there anything else coming out that you can talk about or anything you want to plug in at this time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. during the last God knows how long in between all of the other things that I do I've also written three books which are part of a huge memoir going back to 1895 talking about my family who um, were Armenian and they went through the Armenian genocide and then they moved to Syria 
and they rebuilt their lives in Aleppo, which as you know is in the news right now because it's getting pounded by everyone. Um, and then they moved from there and rebuilt their lives again in Cyprus. And so I follow my family through all of those three generations. It's out there, I have an agent reading it right now, hopefully if, you know, things go well, um, that should be my next project I'm working on. Although, this summer, I did also make another little film, um, which is a chapter from the book, which was always one of my favorite chapters, and I decided to turn it into a story, um, a visual story. So I got a bunch of friends and actors, and I used my family, they were here, so I, I put them in costumes and I filmed this um, very lyrical little s film. Uh, I now have to sit down with my editor and work on that. It's a narrated story, so I'm doing the narration on that. So combining filmmaking and using my voice as well. So that's that. <laughs> all right, so we have last question. And we ask this to all our guests. Any Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media for the fans to get a hold of you? I'm on Twitter. I, don't, I hardly ever tweet. Uh, I'm a very lazy tweeter. Um, I do go on Facebook, but I tend to keep my Facebook page private. I'm working on a website which will be planetvix.com. Um, P L A N E T V I X.com. And I'm trying to make a page where I can collate everything that I've ever done because I used to be an actress for 20 years. I'm writing, I'm doing all of these things. I'm trying to, instead of have people, you know, people look on the internet and they say, what else have you done? And you can find me here, there, and the other. I'm trying to sort of corral it all together into one place. And um, it's going to be planetvix.com. But it's not up yet. I'm still playing with it. So you have to wait. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, well, we want to thank you for joining me for the interview. Okay. And I also want to thank our fans for tuning in for another episode of the Ohio Guys. So, thank you everyone. Thank we'll see you. I'm Christian. Victoria Harwood. And we'll see you next time. Bye.